the recession indicators, uh, the long term, and when I say long term, I mean the ones that have the best track record of being good predictors as further in advance, have been signaling a recession for a long time. So a lot of economists, and I would include myself, have said, you know, there was going to be a recession in 2023. It, according to the data, that didn't happen. Maybe we fell into one around November, December. We won't know for another four or five months. We'll see what happens. But um, but it doesn't mean that the warnings were wrong. and It doesn't mean that we won't have a recession. It just means that it has taken longer to unfold than a lot of people expect it. But now those same signs are actually getting worse. In this insightful finance discussion, Jim Rickards highlights concerning indicators pointing towards an imminent recession. Despite initial optimism from recent employment reports, Rickards emphasizes the hidden challenges, such as a significant loss of full-time jobs, reduced hours worked, and downward revisions in prior months. He underscores the global economic landscape, citing Germany's recession, Japan teetering on the edge, and the UK facing similar challenges. Rickard suggests that despite debates over China's recession status, the slowing growth and contraction in world trade are clear signals of potential economic downturns, urging viewers to consider the broader context beyond surface-level data. With that, let's dive into the video to hear the rest of Jim's thesis. Um, and uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard uh, there was some very good analysis from a number of people. Um, uh, you know, Jeff Snyder, Stephanie Pomboy, uh, 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 Sarge, you know, Susan Gil Steve Guilfoyle, New York Stock Exchange, and others about how that unemployment report, the employment report that mm -hmm. came out uh, about a week ago, was was completely misread. I mean, that was so, you know, the stock market went up, right. uh, unemployment, job creation exceeded expectations, unemployment remained constant. You know, that that was consistent. With the um, with the happy talk, with the Goldilocks narrative, soft landing narrative, et cetera, and so kind of stocks rallied on that. But if you look behind the numbers, I mean, there are two surveys. One of them showed two hundred thousand, about two hundred twenty thousand jobs created. The other one showed one point five million full time jobs lost. Um, about uh, and then there were about seven hundred thousand, a little more part time jobs created. So if you net the two, you still lost. 750,000 full-time jobs. And then, of course, part-time jobs aren't uh, nearly as rewarding as full-time jobs. And then they'll show that, you know, hourly wages went up. Okay, but there were fewer hours worked. That's how employers are managing the costs. Like, yeah, I'll pay a little more, but you work 30 hours instead of 40, so you're making less money. So there was, there was and then they, down, they gave a downward revision to the prior months. And for 12 months in a row, 11 out of the 12 months, they have downwardly revised the prior month's number. So why should we have any confidence in the 220? Uh, because th that's probably going to get downwardly revised cool. next month. And when, when you're when you're like 11, 11 out of 12 months, that's not random. But yeah, there's a certain amount of noise in the data. Everybody understands that. But that's, that's something seriously flawed in the model. You, you don't get that. It's like, you know, uh, rolling the dice, you know, uh, getting a six 11 times in a row. It doesn't happen or it's extremely rare. So there's something wrong with the model. So there's a lot less there than meets the eye. Well, uh, we have so far, but I think our uh, our luck has run out, if you want to put it that way. Germany's in recession. They just are. That data is clear and it's getting worse. Uh, Japan is kind of right on the edge, uh, might be in recession. UK, same thing, right on the edge. Um, the US, China... You know, saying China's in recession is is uh, probably a stretch. But if Ch in, Ch in China, if the growth goes from 10% to 7% to 5% to 4%, which it has over the last uh, 10 years, that's that lost output is equivalent to a recession. Uh, you know, China's trying to prop up their economy. So their, their economy is doing very poorly. I, when I see things like world trade contracting, it's not with, with, with the trade figures, everyone focuses on surplus or deficit. So you have a trade surplus, your GDP goes up. You have a trade deficit, your GDP goes down. Or did the deficit shrink? That makes GDP a little higher, et cetera. Forget about that. I mean, yeah, okay, it's important data. But if you look at the at the top line, the exports and the imports, they're both shrinking. So whether the deficit gets a little bigger or a little smaller is less uh, compelling, less important than the fact that both numbers are going down. World trade is shrinking. Uh, and that almost never happens mm. except in recessions or, you know, during the Great Depression. In this intriguing analysis, 
Jim Rickards sheds light on the Federal Reserve's political dynamics and its impact on interest rates. Rickards anticipates that the Fed, under Jay Powell, is unlikely to cut rates immediately, despite economic warning signs. He delves into the Fed's reliance on lagging indicators, like the unemployment rate, and challenges the validity of the Phillips curve. Rickards suggests that when the Fed finally decides to cut rates, it might be too late, as he predicts a looming recession. This foresight prompts viewers to consider the potential consequences for the economy and the intricate dance between politics and monetary policy. Well, the Fed, of course, always says we're not political. We do right. what we're supposed to do. We follow the models. We're not political. At all. That's completely untrue. They're, they're highly political. They watch the headlines very closely. Um, so they're aware of it. And you have to sort of put Jay Powell in context. He is a Republican, but he's a Bush Republican. He's There's no reason to think he likes Donald Trump or is a Trump supporter, et cetera. He's, he's not a Democrat, but he's, he's the kind of Republican who doesn't really like Donald Trump. Um, so my expectation is, you know, the Fed for now is not going to cut interest rates. They're, they're done raising. That's that's pretty clear. Uh, you'd have to have some kind of inflation shock before they raise rates. That is unlikely to happen. Prices are going down. Well, sorry, the rate of inflation is going down. Prices are still going up. That's a, that's a very, uh, that's a big point of confusion. So prices are going up. But the rate of increases dropped from nine percent to three percent in the past sixteen months. So that's that's progress. Three percent is still well above the Fed's target of two percent. But they think they're at what they call the terminal rate. The terminal rate is the rate where it's high enough to bring inflation down without having to raise rates more. In other words, it, it, it's high enough to act as a break. Just give it time, and inflation will come down on its own without further rate hikes. The Fed believes they're in that position. Um, they won't be raising rates. So the question is, when will they cut rates? The answer is when it's too late, uh, meaning they, the Fed are usually the last to know. And the best example I can give you, they, they, they pay enormous attention to what we just talked about, the unemployment rate. Uh, you know, 3.7%. That's one of the lowest unemployment rates since, uh, since the 1960s. I mean, it is extremely low. And they, but they believe in this Phillips curve and the Phillips curve is an inverse relationship between um, inflation and, uh, uh, and unemployment. So the view is if unemployment's low, inflation is going to go higher. If unemployment goes up, inflation goes down. So they're seeing unemployment extremely low and saying, well, that's that's a little bit of a danger in terms of inflation. So, so we can't cut rates. Um, but in fact, there are a lot of problems with that. First of all, there's no evidence for the Phillips curve. I mean, I can give you to do a, a quad chart, I can show you high unemployment, high high inflation in the late 1970s. I can show you low unemployment, low inflation, you know, in the mid 2010s, um, and so forth. So you can find every lo low unemployment and low inflation during the Great Depression. So there is no Phillips curve, or you constructed it. The Phillips curve, last time I looked, was a flat line, not much of a curve. So first of all, the Phillips curve is garbage. Secondly, Employment is a lagging indicator. I'm not saying it's an unimportant number, but employers do everything possible to avoid laying people off. When, when revenues are drying up and margins are going down and profits are going down, they'll you know they'll turn out the lights. They'll renegotiate the the lease. They'll uh, you know cut the laundry bill. They'll uh, bargain harder with suppliers. They'll do everything they can, except fire people because. People are hard to hire. You, you you get the talent. It's hard to find. You train it. The last thing you want to do is fire them. So they will fire them. Unemployment will go up when they get desperate enough. But by then, the recession has already started. Mm. In other words, it's a lagging indicator that tells you nothing. So my point being, Jay Powell is looking at lagging indicators. If unemployment starts to go up, which I expect it will, he will cut rates. But we'll, we will already be in the recession. So he'll, he'll have political insurance because they'll say, well, yeah, we're cutting rates, but hey, we're in a recession, we have to. It, it, it'll help him avoid the charge that he's doing it to help Biden. I mean, it's uh, the the charge will be made anyway. They'll be in the political crossfire, but the economy will be so bad at that point, no one's going to blame Jay Powell. Today, we dove deep into Jim Rickards' insightful analysis on recession indicators, economic warning signs, and the Federal Reserve's intricate dynamics. Key takeaways include the prolonged unfolding of recession signals, 
the potential misinterpretation of recent employment reports and the looming global economic challenges. As we navigate these complex financial waters, it's crucial to stay informed and engaged. If you found today's discussion valuable, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and share your thoughts in the comments below.